What's going on guys? In this video or video series, we're going to be discussing how to do transfer learning in PyTorch. So recently I've been experimenting with PyTorch and I figured I will make a mini series on how to do transfer learning. Now, I'm not really going to go through all the deep learning fundamentals, but I will try to explain some of the terminology as I encounter it throughout the lesson. So I'm going to expect you to hopefully have some basic understanding of neural networks. But I think I'm going to make it simple enough that even if you don't, you should be able to somewhat follow along. So first, in this video, we will learn how to properly prepare or pre-process the data so we could feed it into the PyTorch models. So with deep learning, you always have to pre-process or clean up the data and turn it into a specific format so that your model is able to uh, use the data. And each framework has a different way of doing that. And then after we've pre-processed the data, then we'll look at some of the ImageNet models. Now the ImageNet models are models that were open sourced by some of the biggest companies. And these models were trained on huge millions of images and thousand classes. So these models are actually good models as a starting point for our personal data. So transfer learning basically means you take a model that was generalized on a huge data set, and then we use that model as a starting point to train on our specific images. So based on empirical evidence, it works a lot better than starting from scratch, and it's a lot faster. In the next video, we will go over how to access some of these ImageNet models and what you need to do to make it work on your personal data. And then the final video or the next couple of videos, we will learn how to actually train the model and then test it out. All right, so with this one, we're just going to learn how to prepare the image data. This is a very important concept, so I've decided to uh, make a separate video on this. All right, to get started with PyTorch, first you need to install PyTorch. The easiest way is to go to the PyTorch official site and when you go to the official site, you come upon this sort of customizable grid chart and you can choose, say Windows, I'm going to do a pip install, your Python, and then you can choose the CUDA you have. Now, you need to install CUDA. Unlike TensorFlow, you don't need CUDNN. So all you need is a CUDA. So you can either have nine or 10. I think I have both actually. Um, they're installed in separate folders and this happens automatically. And uh, you can install CUDA by just uh, searching CUDA, but basically you Google it and you find, you'll find a link that takes you here. And if you hit download now, this is a little tricky, but if you hit download now, then you'll have access to the legacy releases. So if you look at the legacy releases, you could do 10.1, 10, 9, and it seems PyTorch only includes uh, or only uses 9 or 10. So stick with one of those or both of them. And then um, after you have customized this grid, what I want you to do is run these commands and you should be able to install PyTorch. But of course, first install uh, CUDA, which is through uh, this website. All right, so hopefully you guys have no problems with that. Um, if, you're, if there are a lot of problems, just let me know. I'll try to create a separate video on that. All right, so once PyTorch is installed, now we can get to the data preparation. So we're basically going to be dealing with image data because that's the format I'm most comfortable with. I've done some text uh, pre-processing, but I'll need to brush up on that before I can create a video. But here, this is the easiest format to put your images in. Basically, you have one main dir, in this case we'll call it train dir, and then within it, you should have subfolders containing images that belong to each subfolder. So you have a cat, dog, hippo. Say these are the labels that you want your model to be able to classify. So cat, dog, hippo, and you want all the images that are cat to be in the subfolder cat. All the images that are dog, you want it to be in the subfolder dog. So you want to name these according to the labels or according to what you want the classifier to label them as. So if you want the classifier to know this as cat, you should label or name the folder as cat and put all the cat images, the accompanying cat images within that folder. So you have cat, dog, hippo. Now let me show you. So I have a training and validation and um, I've got this data and I've got this data ants and bees. And I've downloaded this actually from the official PyTorch uh, website, the transfer learning tutorial. But basically my dir is train. So my dir is train and I have two labels, ants and bees, which I want my classifier to be able to classify. 
So if we look at ants, these are all images of ants. And if we look at bees, these are all images of bees. So that's the setup of our data. Now we're going to look at all the dependencies that you need to uh, import. Um, there's a bunch of dependencies. I don't want you to worry too much about this because we'll go over it as we go through the code. So let me just run this uh, dependency cell. And now our router is going to be the main dir. And as you remember, we have a training and validation. So if you guys are not familiar with the, what these folders represent, basically when you have data that you want to feed into the deep learning model, you will divide your data up into two parts or even three parts. So the two parts are going to be training and validation. The training is what you're going to feed into the model to train the model. So the model is going to learn patterns from this training data. The validation is something you hold out and you periodically have the model run something called inference. Uh, inference is basically not training, but testing the model. So you have some data where you train the model, the model will look at the data and trying to learn patterns. Then you have separate data where you're actually testing or sort of quizzing to see what the model has learned. And that's what you use sort of the validation set for. You pause the training and then you feed the data and see what the outputs are and see if the outputs are matching what you expected. If the outputs start matching what you expected, you'll know that whatever it's learning from the training data is applicable to uh, data it hasn't seen. So Sometimes what happens with some of these models is that it starts training on a specific data set, say with cats, it has 100 images, and it starts picking up patterns. But sometimes the patterns it's picking up is not patterns that will allow it to identify all types of cats. So say, for example, in your training data set, you have 100 black cats. Now, this is not good because what it will do is it will just start picking up the black color. And if you have another cat that's a white cat, it will not be able to pick up the white cat because it picked up the easiest pattern within the data set. That's why it's good to have a variety of images so that when it actually trains, it will pick up the necessary patterns, which is like the eyes, the fur, the fur texture, the tail, etc. So you need the deep learning model to pick up the actual patterns that we as humans pick up. So validation is just a way to check that it's actually picking up the correct patterns. Now we're going to create an, a data set from image folder, All right? So earlier we imported image folder from torchvision.datasets and the image folder allows us to create a data set from the earlier setup. So the image folder, you basically just feed it this trainer and it'll automatically realize that ants is a pattern, bees is a pattern and it'll automatically sort of uh, prepare the data for you. Now, here's another important concept called transforms. Now, before you could feed the data into the model, you need to make a couple of transformations. And here, what you need to do is resize the image uh, to tensor and normalize. Now, there's a lot more different transformations you can do to try to increase your data set. And this is called image augmentation, but we're not going to worry about that too much. We're just going to stick to the necessary transforms. All right, so your model expects the data to be the same size. So each image has to be the same size. So that's why you have to resize it to a specific size. Now, some of the ImageNet models have a cap as to how small the data can be. And I think there's no cap as to how large it can be. But there is a cap as to how small the data could be. I think it could be 128. I'm not exactly sure. But most of these models use images that are of the size 299 or even 480. So depending on the model, you can try to switch around the image size and see what your results are. But for the, I think ResNet and uh, even Inception, I think most of these models do well on 224. So we'll leave it at 224 for the time being. So that's the first transform you have to do. You can't have images of different sizes. You need to um, have them to be the same size. Now to tensor is basically converting that data into a format that PyTorch will understand, which is to tensor. And this allows um, PyTorch to easily throw it onto the graphics card to do the calculation and bring it back. So to tensor basically converts it into an, a format that PyTorch understands. Now this resize always has to be done before uh, to tensor because the resize is using pill and PIL cannot access tensors, uh, PyTorch tensors, or it cannot manipulate PyTorch tensors. So some of the things are happening with PIL 
And then uh, some of them will happen with PyTorch, which is, I think, just normalize, which I'll explain in a bit. So any image transformations, whether it be a resize, rotation, etc., should be done before 2Tensor. So 2Tensor will convert it into a format that PyTorch will understand, and then normalize will normalize the data. Now this happens in order. So resize happens, and then TensorFlow, and then normalize. Whatever the output of resize is gets fed into 2Tensor. The output of that gets fed into a normalize. So let's explain what normalize is. Uh, normalize basically uh, normalizes the data. Currently, the data image pixels are from 0 to 255, and that's a little large. So what it does is it first converts all the data to be in between 0 and 1. That's the first step of normalization, which transforms does automatically. Then normalize, um, what it does is it takes the mean. There's a certain formula. It takes the mean of each channel and the standard deviation of each channel of all of the images it was trained on. So it was trained on the ImageNet data set. What it did is it took the mean of all the images red channel, the mean of all the images green for that second number, and then blue. Then it took the standard deviation as well, and it did some sort of uh, normalization algorithm. So I'm not sure if the, it was a standardization, which they subtract the mean and divide it by the standard deviation, but they basically did some sort of formula. And these numbers here are numbers you're going to be constantly using with any ImageNet model. So any model that was trained on the ImageNet data set will be normalized using these. So you don't really have to worry too much about the process of normalization because we're just going to be running this code as it's used for all of the ImageNet open source models or any model that was trained on the ImageNet data set. So these are the transforms. Now, once we have the transforms that we want, all we need to do to create a data set is use image folder, which was um, imported up here. Now our root is going to be the train. Remember, we have a train set, which holds subfolders, and we have a validation set, which holds subfolders. So first we're going to create a, a train a data set or a training data set. So it's going to be os.path.join.root, which was our mainder, but now we need to also access the subder, which is trainder, and we're going to have our transform equal to transforms. All right, so once again, this uh, root is the, the dir that holds the subfolders. So in our case, we have our training dir and validation dir that holds the subfolder. So we will actually need to create two different image folder objects. So we'll have the training data and then the validation data. So that's it. So we have our root equals the, the path to the train data, then we have a transform equals transforms, and we have image folder. And just by this, it actually prepares the data that's necessary to feed into a data loader, which will convert these into randomized batches, and then it will feed into the model. So that's all we really need. We have this train data. So let's just run this. And now let's just uh, run some cells on this train data to get a better understanding of what this train data actually is and what it's holding and some of the attributes. So we run type train data and you'll see it's a type data set and it's an image folder. So it's a, a data set, but it's an image folder data set. Now, if you look at the len of data set, you'll see it's 244. So we have 244 images from all of our total labels within the training data set. Now the train data that classes, which are going to be the labels, will be the ants and bees. And we can convert these to numbers because that's how uh, the model is going to understand. The model doesn't understand words, it understands numbers. And these are just simple sort of utility code lines converting into, instead of having ants to zero, we could have zero to ants. All right, now we're going to look at the first 10 images. So as you can see, these are the image paths and these are the labels. So remember, ants are represented by zero and bees are represented by one. So if we look at the last 10, it should be bees. All right, and if we just run train data itself, if we print train data, you'll see it comes up with image, uh, information. A data set image folder, number of data points, 244, the location, and the type of transforms we used. Now you also have target transforms, which are transforms on the label as well. But we won't deal with that right now. Okay, so this video has actually been going on a little longer than I expected. So what I'll do is I'll divide it up into two parts. So I'll cut it here, 
and we'll continue with the next part.